boy. I think I've been at the vice a little bit too long. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Wow. Although I am committed, should be committed, I am committed while we're in this lockdown situation to teaching myself new things. One of the new things I'm teaching myself to do is to try new beers. Well, I guess that's not really new. I've always done that. But the beers are new. This craft brewery is basically around the corner from my place. The beer is amazing. This is a Sunburst. Well, they call it Sunburst. It's a New England Pale Ale. And uh, I would suggest trying the beers from Storm State. Great bunch of people making great beer. It's not the like Anyhow, where was I? Oh yeah, get talking about beer, I forget everything else. The uh, skill that I was talking about, I'm not talking about learning how to do bright, make bridal gowns or, or hang, learning how to hang glide or learning how to build an airplane or something crazy like that. I'm talking about simple skills that you've always said to yourself, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna learn how to do that. And one of those things that I've been meaning to teach myself is how to do a proper whip finish. And what I mean by proper whip finish is kind of like the most accepted way of doing a whip finish. I do it with two hands. It's a little unorthodox, a little clunky, uh, but it works for me. It came out of necessity because every time I went to look for one of these, I couldn't find it. My scissors stay right in my hand the whole time I'm tying a fly. Sometimes it gets a little dangerous, but at least when I need the scissors to do things, they're there. The uh, whip finish that I decided to learn how to do is the magical one that all the professionals uh, seem to be able to do. So I watched about six different YouTube videos trying to figure out how to do it. And the last one that I watched is the one that clicked with me. But I'll leave it down in the description and you can have a look at it. If you already know how to do it, well, la di da. <laughs> I have just joined your club because now I know how to do it. And I'm going to show you that I can do it. I'm not going to show you how to do it because, like I said before, there's all kinds of videos already on YouTube about how to do it. The fly that I'm going to tie is a caddis larva. I fish these a lot because there's caddis just about everywhere. Um, all over North America, all over the world. Caddis everywhere. And one of the most common ones around here, especially in Ontario, is one that's technically called a Rockefellia. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the green rock worm that people slangily say. Is that a word? Slangily. It is now. The reason it's called a rock worm is it's stuck to rocks all the time stuck on the bottom of the rocks. Uh, when they do become available for fish to eat, that's when they're in trouble. They're not stuck to rocks anymore. So people say, Paul, what kind of weight do you use on your larva? And I say, I don't. Oh, no beet head? No, no beet head. Oh, so you use like lead or lead free wraps under the dressing? No, no, I don't. I don't use any weight other than the hook itself on this pattern. And I'll tell you why. 
a lot of the time, a lot of the streams that I fish are shallow. They're really shallow, and big fish can be in undercuts that are only six, eight inches deep. But my unweighted pattern tumbles right into that undercut, <clears throat> so it's right in the fish's face. The other thing that an unweighted pattern does is it acts naturally in the current. It actually does this through the current. Sometimes it might hit the bottom, but it's not going tick, 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 tick along the bottom. It's going tick, tick. So hard to accomplish with a bead on it, hard to accomplish with lead under wraps. So I don't do that. If you want it to go tick, tick, tick on the bottom, put split shot on. No. That's what I do. Put the right amount of split shot on it to get to the depth that you want to get to and whatever the current dictates. So it's all about presentation. You've heard me say this before. Presentation is probably 90% of catching fish. If you can get that fly in front of the fish, chances are he's going to eat it. By the way, if you guys are working on any skills during this lockdown, or if there's skills that you've always wanted to learn, and maybe this video might inspire you to go ahead and do it because you got nothing else to do, drop it in the comments below. Let me know what skills you're learning. Fishing, hunting, uh, camping, bushcraft, any of that sort of thing, canoeing, kayaking, so let me know what you're looking for. Let me know what you're, uh, what you're looking to learn during this lockdown. Anyhow, let's go tie this fly. The hook being used here is a Mustad 9671 in a size 12. Even though this is a smaller pattern, I'm using a 6 aught thread. The ribbing material is an olive wire, in this case UTC's ultra wire, in small. Tie the tip of the wire down with a couple of turns, about a third of the way down the hook shank. The body material is a bright green yarn. Attach it with a couple of turns of thread at the tie-in point of the wire. While holding both the wire rib and the yarn, bind them both down to a point just past the bend of the hook. This saves you the step of binding them both down individually. Now, grab the yarn only and wind it forward in touching turns to form the body. For the rib, you want to counterwind the wire over the body in an open, even spiral. Counterwinding, or winding in the opposite direction to that of the yarn, allows the wire to be a little more prominent as it sits on top of the body 
rather than slipping between the turns of yarn. For the thorax, you want to use a Black Rabbit and Antron Blend dubbing. Rabbit for the spiky guard hairs and Antron for a bit of sparkle. And now it's time to try out my new skill, the single handed whip finish. Still a bit rusty, but it should get smoother as I keep at it. The last step is to tease the dubbing out from the bottom. Use a bodkin or a dubbing brush. Don't go nuts with it, just enough to simulate the legs. And there you have it. A simple, effective Rockefeller caddis larva pattern. I hope you like this. See you in my next video.